So Basildon and Brentwood councils have entered into a joint consultation to build from 4,000 to 6,000 new houses on Greenbelt land at Dunton. They've dubbed the plan Dunton Garden Suburb. They say it will have generous open spaces and be a place where people will want to live, work and relax. It sounds great, but what is the reality? Let's start by looking at the housing density. The councils have been a bit cagey about the size of the area that they want to build on, but I've drawn a square mile here over the plan to give some idea. From this, we can estimate that the population density is going to be about twice what we're used to in Langdon and Langdon Hills. So there's no way that this is going to be the spacious suburb they want us to believe. The next point on many people's objections is the increased road traffic. Scenes like this will be familiar to anyone who has had to use the A127 and its feeder roads in the early morning. The extra population will inevitably make matters much worse, as will all the other planned developments in the area. Even if they widen roads, there will be bottlenecks. How will they keep the traffic flowing? One of the few details we have for what the suburb is likely to include is a new train station. This sounds like a good thing, but it may not be. It will bring even more traffic into the area as London commuters head for the station car park. Roads will need yellow lines everywhere, but the biggest concern for us is the threat it poses to existing stations at Langdon and West Horndon. They may need to be closed to justify and finance a new station at Dunton. Schools have always been a hot topic in the West Basildon area. The new families of Dunton Garden suburb will easily fill two to three primary schools and a large secondary school. All schools in the area are oversubscribed except James Hornsby, which has the capacity to take another 350 students. By the time they start building DGS in 2022, James Hornsby should be filled from other housing developments in the area. It will become overscribed, but it will be two miles from the centre of the Dunton suburb, so nobody will be able to get in from there. Already, there are enough children to fill a large secondary school here. They take the bus to schools outside Basildon, so with DGS, we really need two new secondary schools in the area. And if they're not included in the plans, there will be no space left to build them. It's the same story with health services. At local surgeries, we already have waiting times for appointments measured in weeks. At Basildon Hospital, even the car park is full. How will it cope with at least 10% more patients? And where will they find the doctors and nurses that are already in short supply? One of the most worrying features of the plan for local residents is the inclusion of traveller pitches in the new suburb. The eviction costs for Dale Farm and Hove Fields have created a lot of bad feeling around here. A study for the council now says that we should provide 240 new pitches by 2032 in Basildon alone. Now Brentwood want to add their needs and solve them by building a traveller camp straddling the border within Dunton Garden City. Just how big do they want it to be? Many residents here will object strongly to any traveller presence at all. Let's move on to something more fundamental, the loss of Greenbelt land. England is now the most densely populated country in Europe. The Greenbelt was set aside for a reason, to stop urban sprawl. Now, the councils have provided some rather dull looking pictures of fields at Dunton, so I've taken the liberty of making some improvements to their brochure. We should not have to lose these beautiful spaces. Other councils are not doing this and we don't think it is necessary to destroy Greenbelt land anywhere. The council admit that the plans will have an impact on local wildlife. These meadows, ponds and trees are home to rare species such as the great crested newt and spotted woodpecker. Their habitats are protected by legislation. It is not good enough for councils to keep taking it away with the excuse each time that it's fine because there is still a little left. Another big environmental issue is flooding. This map shows areas that are prone to inundations with the site of the suburb shown as the circle. 
They can't build on the western part of the site due to the flood risk, so that will remain as a green corridor. But the area they will build on is also waterlogged. Of course they will use surface drains so the suburb itself won't flood much. But instead of soaking into fields, the water will quickly run off to the lower basin. Sorry West Horndon, you can expect a lot more of this. A less obvious problem is the district boundary between Brentwood and Basildon that runs through the centre of the site. It will mean that the residents to either side will have different services run by different councils. Furthermore, the Brentwood side will be paying Brentwood council taxes but will rely on many amenities nearby in Basildon. Finally, the most heartbreaking aspect of the development is the impact it will have directly on the president residents of Dunton. Many face years of uncertainty followed by compulsory purchases of the land they live on. The residents of the Dunton Caravan Park have been given no idea of where they stand. It would be ironic indeed if they were kicked out to make way for traveller pitches. So what of the upside? Councillors have pointed to new jobs, but mostly these will be temporary construction jobs. After that, we can expect more extra people than extra jobs. Of course, we need affordable homes for local people, but there are already many places where they are being built. These new houses are more likely to attract people from other areas where the councils are not sacrificing their greenbelt. And yes, we are told that it will help rebuild the Langdon Shopping Centre. But in fact, there is already a new developer for that, and Dunton Garden suburb will not start being built until 2022. How can it be relevant? So why are they really doing this? And why have they tried to put such an unjustified positive spin on it? For such a major development, why have they not at least sent letters to us so that the people know that this is happening?